Hi, this is a short video about how to use the Behringer DEQ2496 to apply some corrective equalization in the base range of your hi-fi system. Uh, the idea being to get a smoother frequency response and nail out any sort of boomy or thin sounding areas in the, in the range. Um, to do this, uh, you will need a omnidirectional microphone connected to the RTA slash mic input on the back of the Behringer. Um, and you can do this by means of an XLR to XLR cable, which you can get from most pro audio shops. Um, the microphone should be placed at your listening position around about head height, um, so that it picks up the same sound that you'd hear if you're sitting there listening to your hi-fi. Uh, if you don't have a mic stand, you can usually sort of balance the microphone on a cushion or something like that. Uh, being omnidirectional, it doesn't particularly matter about the sort of direction it's pointing. Uh, especially in the bass range. Uh, the first thing we should probably do is recall the sort of initial factory settings so that we have a good blank slate to start our start our EQ from. If you're anything like me, you've probably been fiddling around a bit and got a lot of different settings in there. So first of all we should press memory and go to initial data. You can use this big wheel to select which ones are on there. I'm already on the memory page so having gone to that initial data and press B for recall preset. Press that and now uh, it says recall all data. Now the buttons around the screen including these wheels and these ones down here are sort of multi-function buttons which change what they do depending on what's written on the screen near it. You see first of all button B said recall now it's changed to OK so press it again OK to recall all the data. Uh, now the first thing we need to do is go to the input output menu. Now there's a sort of square pad just off to the right hand side here which I haven't been able to get in the, in the video because I wanted to zoom in on the screen so you can see the details more clearly but um, anyway this IO button is on the square pad to the right hand side. It's on the bottom row and in the middle labelled I slash O input output. So if we press that you'll see the screen changes to this. Um, now what you need to do is set the noise gain to around about minus 10, minus 12, something like that. Uh, now the next thing to do is press RTA, that's a real time analyzer, so you press that. First of all I should teach you about the page button, you can see this RTA, it says 1 under there, if you press it again it will say 2, press it again it will go to 3. So uh, going back to page 1, a lot of the menus have this sort of page layout to fit more settings in there, so you can often press the page button and find more settings. So going back to page 1, we need auto EQ, so let's press that. Edit target curve and press page. Now this is the sort of frequency response which we want the system to EQ it to. So at the moment, I don't know why, but they've got nothing in the base, so that's not adjusted, and everything upwards from about 100 hertz. Now we want to do essentially the opposite of that. So we can press this big control wheel to sort of select or deactivate frequencies which we're going to adjust, and now if you're using a small speaker like I am here, which only has a 12 centimeter bass driver, obviously it doesn't produce very low bass. So we don't want to tell it to EQ flat right down to the lowest frequencies because it will boost that far too much for the speaker. In this case, the speaker goes down to around about 40 hertz. So I'd say go up to, let's say 30 and press and select that for EQ. Use this other control knob to select which one you're looking at. Next one, next one. Next one, next one, and I'd say go up to about 300 hertz, and anything above 300 hertz deactivate because EQ is only corrective in the modal range. Above that, it just acts like a tone control. So if you start EQing that, you're going to change the tone of the system, and you end up with something which sounds nothing like the hi fi you actually like. So at the moment, we're looking at around about 30 hertz to 250 hertz is the area of adjustment and I keep it nice and flat because we want a flat smooth frequency response. Uh, so there we go. The next thing to do is press page and in fact you can see it showing on this screen the speaking which I'm doing now picked up by the microphone at the listening position. Now what we need to do is make sure that room core, room correction is active. We can press page again to go to the third page. Now here you can see max and it says plus 6 dB. This is the maximum level that it should apply. Um, 
I'd say about 6 dB is correct for most speakers with, say, a 6-inch bass driver or more. Uh, every 6 dB boost requires four times the power and obviously pushes the speaker a lot harder. For a very small speaker like the Kenzai, which I'm using here, I'd say possibly even 4 or 5 dB is uh, maximum level to boost to. But I'll leave it at 6 here. You can then press Start Auto EQ. It now says measuring ambient level and it does this to pick up the background noise level in your room so that when it applies correction uh, it's not actually just listening to traffic outside or something like that. Uh, now measures the actual uh, sound coming from your hi-fi and analyzes it so that it can see what's actually going on. It now starts the EQ process and you can see on this screen where it's starting to change the response and you can even hear it as it goes. Uh, if you press the page button, you can go to the other page which actually shows the response which is me being measured and you can watch it slowly changing to become flatter. It doesn't automatically decide that it's time to finish, so when you can see that it's not really changing anything very much anymore, uh, you can press the Done button on page 3. Ok, now the auto correction system has finished doing what it does, we can go and have a look at the settings it's put in. If we go over to the right hand control panel and press the top left button labeled GEQ, we can see what it's done. If we use this top control knob, we can have a look here at what it's done. Uh, there's one that's quite high here, 7 dB at 125 Hz. Uh, as I said before, every 6 dB boost requires four times the amplifier power and pushes the speaker very hard. So I'd suggest reducing anything which is quite high down a bit. Like 7 dB there at 125 Hz, let's reduce that down to 4 dB. To be a more sort of subtle correction. And uh, generally, I think subtle EQ corrections sound a lot more natural and better than applying too much strong correction, even though it might measure perfectly at the microphone. Uh, 63 hertz, 6.5 dB. Again, let's reduce that down to like 5 dB maximum. And there we've got some reasonably subtle correction in there, but it should really help balance out the uh, frequency response. Now, this speaker is quite small, which I'm using here, and even though at 20 hertz it says it's not applying any EQ, since the speaker doesn't produce that frequency, we might as well reduce the output there. So let's turn 20 hertz down to like minus 8 dB and 25 hertz down to minus 5. Therefore, we're saving the small speaker from working too hard. Um, and there you have it. There's nothing above about 300 hertz because we didn't want to apply EQ here. If we did apply EQ above this range, it would drastically alter the tonal characteristic of the system and probably it will just sound strange to you, so let's just leave that alone. But below here it can really help. Um, there is one more very important step. Go to the utility menu, bottom left hand corner, on the right hand control panel. And here we can use the top control knob to come down to the setting which says gain offset. Now, if you apply 6 dB of boost, obviously a signal which would have hit the maximum level will now overload it. So if you've got 6 dB of boost, you should turn the gain offset down to minus 6 dB. Therefore, the signal will never clip over the uh, maximum level. It's very important. It's one reason I think a lot of people don't like the EQ sound once they finish, because they forget to reduce it and they end up with clipping sounds whenever it uh, plays anything in the range which is boosted. So now, having done that, we can go to Memory and save our settings. Use the big control knob to come down to a bank, like 3, which is empty. Press A, Store Preset. Now we can use the big knob to select the first letter, say E, and the bottom one to cycle to the next letter, Q. Cycle again, 3. And B, OK. And we've saved it, and I think that's all. We can enjoy listening to some music now.